Mr. Speaker, this question has been raised and answered in Parliament on 24 February. I have no update to provide to the House. The member may wish to refer to that reply. Thank you. Mr. Pereira. I thank the uh, Minister for her reply. I think in the last exchange, the Minister mentioned that Singapore is uh, currently considering uh, to be a, either a claimant uh, or a donor to the COP27 Biodiversity Fund. So my SQ would be, would the government consider uh, being a donor rather than a claimant, given that it behooves us as a developed country to do our part to maintain global biodiversity vis-a-vis -vis countries such as, for example, Democratic Republic of the Congo, who have much larger land and biodiversity resources and also less funding to, to manage that issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd just like to refer to uh, my reply, and I'll repeat here, is that we have not reached an understanding on what the fund entails, and therefore we have not uh, we didn't have a chance to discuss this internationally and therefore we have not decided whether we would contribute or we will claim from this fund. So our position is open and this is part of negotiation at the international level. Uh, so we will take consideration of all views, Singaporeans as well as the needs of international community as we enter the discussion at UNFCCC. But maybe I'd like to thank uh, the member for his support uh, for loss and damage and in helping uh, developing countries. And if I may, Mr. Speaker, maybe ask the member for his position whether the party, WP, supports contributing to the fund, and if so, what amount should we contribute to and to which countries besides uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, where would he draw the line between developing country and least developing countries? I thank the Minister for a question. I won't speak for the party. I can share my personal opinion. Uh, I think we should make a, a reasonable contribution. I mean, where do you draw the balance point on that? I don't have a figure, but I think we can take reference, perhaps from other developed countries with a similar size of economy of GDP as ours, and use that as a, as a reference point. How those funds should be disbursed to different developing countries, I think it should be in proportion to the needs and the resources of those developing countries, meaning to say in proportion to the land area and biodiversity challenge that those developing countries faced uh, and the uh, funding, GDP availability of government funds that those countries, those developing countries have. Thank you. I take it that uh, the member would recommend that we will tag our contribution, our donation to the fund at the GDP level, regardless of whether it's the developing or undeveloped countries, or whether it's uh, taking into consideration things like population size. Um, I would also like uh, perhaps to clarify from members um, whether he would suggest that we move away from the agreement that we have reached at Paris because so far, Paris Agreement has a basis for all discussions, and in the Paris Agreement, there are certain understanding that has been reached. As is he suggesting that for loss and damage, we should move away from established agreement internationally? Thank the Minister for her reply, and basically just to reiterate what I just said, because I'm not sure if um, what the Minister recapitulated, uh, reflected what I said. I was suggesting that reference can be taken in terms of the donation that we make to the COP27 fund, reference can be taken from what other developed countries of a similar size of GDP to ours are donating. That means you look at what other developed countries are doing and you normalise that according to GDP. So that was my suggestion. And for where those funds should go, that should be distributed according to the challenges that the country, developing countries are facing uh, in terms of biodiversity scale and the resources that those developing countries have to, to address that issue. Just, just to kind of clarify what I said uh, earlier, 
Should we move away from the Paris Agreement? No. In fact, I'd like to ask the Minister to share whether donating to the COP27 fund necessarily involves deviating from previous agreements made at Paris. It's not my understanding that it does, but perhaps uh, she has a different perspective and some information to share on that point. Thank you. So I appreciate that um, this is the second question the member has made two months after my first reply. In the first reply, if members have gone through in detail, would notice that I have taken plain, pain to explain that we are discussing this and there's a principle that all parties are adhering to, which is Paris Agreement. And in Paris Agreement, um, there is a clear definition of who the developing countries are and who the developed countries are. And we do not belong to the developed countries. So if members is now suggesting that Singapore is a developed country and benchmarking the other developed countries, that is a deviation from Paris Agreement. Thank you.